Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the new Abbey Road Half-Speed Remaster of the Who's Tommy. Um, I'll be comparing it to an analog pressing that I have from Japan, so stay tuned for that. Um, before I get started, if you're new and haven't already, consider subscribing. Hit subscribe and notification so you can be sure to get notified of any new content I put up, which is usually about twice a week. Um, also, before I start, I wanted to just say a couple of words about the MoFi situation. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of it. MoFi has been questioned about their use of digital in their chain um, of supposedly original master recordings. Most of us have been led to believe that they're all analog um, and with the exception of the Silver series. And there are accusations that this may not be true. So they are based on speculation, not not directly from the company. So, you know, something's in process to find out the truth. Um, you know, the guy from, I'm sorry, <laughs> the guy, uh, Mike from the end groove is going out there to have a visit and see the process. So we'll get a report from him on Tuesday. Personally, um, I am not opposed to digital uh, records. I've heard many good ones. Um, the most recent being Abbey, Abbey Road's Half Speed Remaster of Avalon. And gave it, I gave it a great review. Um, if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description box below. And also the Chardet box set I thought was excellent as well. So, you know, if they do have digital in the chain, it doesn't change the way they sound. They still sound as good as they ever did, but we want transparency. And I hope the result of this will be that it'll prompt transparency throughout the industry. So that's my two cents. Um, I don't want to go any further than that till we have more info. So I was really anxious to get this after listening to the Avalon once, uh, Avalon half speed. This is uh, the Who's Tommy. Um, I'm going to show you all the artwork in close-ups. So, But it says mastered by John Astley at Close to the Edge. Half-speed vinyl masters cut by Miles Scholl at Abbey Road Studio. It all goes on to say this record was cut using a specialist technique known as half-speed mastering. This artisan process results in cuts that have a superior high frequency response, treble, and very solid and stable stereo images. In short, a very high quality master that helps to create a very high quality record. Um, as you look through the images of the artwork, I gotta say that they did a marvelous job with the, with the, with the packaging just gorgeous reproduction of that artwork and if you know the record it's elaborate it's elaborate it's a trifold and they've reproduced it almost exactly i think i think the original had an opening on the on the left pocket so one record went in there and one one went in the back or something like that but they've they've kind of played around with where the records go but no matter um it is beautiful just beautiful, glossy, very accurate uh, reproduction of the artwork. There's a lovely booklet that has more artwork in it. And there's a certificate of authenticity as well, which was a nice little touch explaining the half speed mastering process and signed by Miles Scholl. So all in all, a beautiful package. Very, very nice. Way better than what I have here, which is a simple gatefold in a matte sleeve. I always thought this was pretty nice. And when I saw it in Iraq 20 years ago, I grabbed it. I, I hadn't had a copy of Tommy before that. Um, Tommy is a record that, um, you know, I like The Who. I love Who's Next. I love parts of Quadrophenia. And I love parts of uh, Tommy. It's not something that I feel has the punch of 
something like Who's Next, where it's very condensed, all great songs. There's not, doesn't have to be inter interconnecting threads um, to tell the story, because there is no story. Um, it is from a larger project, but that's another issue. But Tommy is a rock opera, and it needs continuity for the story to unfold. And that means certain scenes and stuff are maybe not the all out who sound that we want, you know, and that's my only disappointment with Tommy as a work of art. I think it, it lags in places. Um, it has very strong cuts sprinkled throughout and overall is a great achievement, but it has that kind of flow like this, you know, in my, in my opinion. So I, I don't pull it out too often to listen to. Um, I, I usually listen to it like maybe once a year. And oftentimes I don't play the whole thing. I will play my favorite cuts, um, which let me tell you what they are. I love overture and underture. I think hearing, hearing just instrumental is very interesting and beautiful. And those are really, really done well. Um, I love Amazing Journey. I love uh, Christmas. I think Pinball Wizard and Acid Queen are okay. Um, and I love Sensation and I'm free and we're not gonna take it. It's things like Tommy's Holiday Camp. I don't know, there's a doctor smash the mirror. I don't know. It's it's something that before this I could take or leave uh, a lot of it. But so I put this on the the uh, Japanese a couple of nights ago in preparation for this and listened to most of it and thought it sounded great. I thought, you know, I've always thought this this particular issue sounded very, very good. I didn't have anything to compare it to, but um, I was satisfied with the sound on it. And I listened to it, not critically the other night, but I, I listened to it and uh, kind of got a baseline for this review. When the new one came in, I was, I put it on and I was listening more critically, of course. And I gotta say, the levels are not the same on these records. So I may have listened to the Japanese at a lower level and got a different impression. But I corrected that the next day when I listened to the new one. So I put the new one on and immediately was struck by the extra clarity on everything. Vocals, guitars, drums, uh, you know, the instrument separation. As far as detail, there's a lot more detail on this record than on the analog copy that I have. And I found that that was a that was also also the case with the Roxy Music uh, reissues. Uh, the detail is more apparent and it's clearer, so it kind of seems like it stands out in relief compared to older pressings. Whether that's correct or not, if it's closer to the master tape, and we've been listening to, you know, the record through an analog haze, I can't say for sure because I haven't heard a ma the master tape. I've never heard a master tape. But it seems like this is closer to the master than this. Um, it seems like the detail is not, it, it is kind of, it's not exaggerated. It's more evident. I don't, I don't consider that the same as exaggerated. Like strumming on the guitar in the, in the first cut right off the bat, I said, well, I didn't hear it like that on this one. And I could hear every detail of that, the strumming and the pick on the strings. Vocals were, wow, right up there, you know, like in the room. And the drum sound, uh, the drum sound is powerful on the new one. Um, and very impactful, I thought. The whole, the whole presentation was very involving. 
I actually listened to the whole thing through uh, because I was so engaged with it. And that's a good sign because normally I don't listen to the whole of Tommy. And I wasn't doing it just for the evaluation. I was doing it for enjoyment. And I really got off on hearing how well it was done. And I think Miles has done a wonderful job here. I think it is, is, is clear. It's, it's got weight. It's got punch. It's got clarity. It's got uh, spaciousness, separation. It's got more of that than the analog copy. Where the analog copy shines maybe is a little bit more of a, let's say organic presentation. I know that's not an audio term, but it's bathed in an analog glow, sort of, and it's very appealing as well. When I played this uh, Japanese copy after finishing this one, the half speed, I matched the levels. And this one rose in my estimation as well. Um, this one has the more analog sound. This one has more detailed sound, more powerful sound. Um, this one needs to be turned up to hear, to give you that powerful impression. Um, and once I did, it was a closer contest, but they do sound very different. They do sound very different. And I think Who fans will want to hear this new one for sure. It reveals a lot of what's on the tape that is not revealed on my uh, Japanese pressing. Whether it does for original US Decas or the classic records or the 2014 Kevin Gray, there's plenty of choices out there. But I think this is a very valid presentation and quite exciting and dynamic to listen to. It drew me in and kept me there for the whole of the record. And that is quite an achievement for me because I don't usually do that with Tommy. So I think you'll like it. I mean, I really do. I Take a listen to it if you can um, or just take a chance and, and buy it. If you're a big Who fan, you'll definitely want to have this. And um, I can highly recommend it for sure. So let me know what you think um there there are links below for amazon if you want to order it as always when you order through links here um it helps the channel in a small way but no matter wherever you get it i think you should take a listen to to this new um issue of the who's tommy it really is special and it really shows how much further along miles is in uh perfecting these records and i think I think he's doing a wonderful job. Again, just like Avalon, this, this is a different presentation from the analog copies we're used to, but an equally valid one and a very exciting one as well. So give it a chance. Take a, take a listen and let me know what you think. Until um, next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.